uh, we're very fortunate to have Dr. Yaroslav Kola online today and to talk to us on local content. Dr. Kola is uh, Assistant Professor uh, in Law and uh, also have extensive uh, public procurement law and uh, experience and also have, have consulted to uh, a number of agencies, uh, procurement agencies uh, covering uh, transportation, uh, energy, etc. So uh, um, quite a wide variety of, of industries, uh, public sector industries. And so we're fortunate to have Dr. Kola online. And uh, yeah, Dr. Kola, so welcome, man. Thank you. Thank you very much. And thank you for this uh, warm introduction. Uh, and, and, and thank you for, for your words. Uh, firstly, of course, I have to generally uh, say uh, thank you very much. Uh, and especially, uh, I want to say thank you to uh, Mr. Sean Scott, who, who invited me. So thank you very much uh, for this uh, invitation and this opportunity uh, to share the results of uh, my research on the local content uh, concept. Of course, from the uh, from the um, European perspective or the Polish perspective, because I am the lawyer um, in Poland, um, I know that it's uh, usually um, quite rare situation. For me, it's quite a rare situation that uh, I have an opportunity uh, to be um, quite an exotic uh, ghost, uh, guest um, at uh, at any meeting. Uh, so, uh, so it is also very inspiring um, for me. Um, I had a privilege and great pleasure to take part in uh, the conference organized by uh, APLU, um, African Procurement uh, Law uh, Unit, uh, by Professors uh, Hyokino and uh, Soap uh, Williams uh, in 2018, and it was uh, it is still uh, probably the greatest um, the greatest uh, event that I have ever had uh, when it comes to uh, when it comes to uh, my academic um, career. So uh, yeah, meeting with you. Um, is is uh, is a pleasure and 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 I am uh, honored. Um, as I understand, the trigger um, that encouraged uh, you to invite me um, was the publication of my article on local content. Uh, this article was entitled uh, "The Local Content Concept in Public Procurement: Global Trends uh, in the Development of Public Procurement Law." Uh, on the example of the United States of America, South Africa, uh, and Poland. And uh, in this context, uh, I think I should start with a disclaimer. Um, as I mentioned, I am a lawyer from Poland, uh, which is a member of the um, European Union, and um, that is why I specialized in uh, Polish public procurement law and EU public procurement law. Uh, the law and legal tradition um, of uh, South Africa in relation to um, in relation to the uh, oh, sorry, I have to uh, yeah some 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 uh, yeah I had to fix with something um, yeah so the legal um, the legal uh, the law and the legal tradition of South Africa um, in relation to local content requirements uh, are very interesting and inspiring to me but of course I have to admit that I am not specialist in uh, South African uh, law in my article uh, I use the South African experience in this field as inspiration uh, but also as a proof that outside the uh, European Union uh, the issue of local content uh, is not only the subject of intense academic uh, doctrinal discussion but also the subject of uh, action by the uh, legislator by the uh, lawmaker um, in the next uh, few minutes probably I will mention that uh, from the European perspective we should say that our discussion our tradition in this field and our regulation are rather poor and we are starting or um, or even we are going to start the debate on the local um, content uh, but um, I believe that um, I hope that um, I will be able to uh, say something interesting also from your um, perspective uh, but yeah that is why I wanted to make it clear at the beginning that uh, I will not talk about my observations on South African uh, law because you are undoubtedly much greater experts in this field um, than me however I would like to interest you 
in the perspective of a lawyer from the European Union, where the possibility of uh, use of local content requirements is very limited. Uh, some people even believe that it is not in accordance with the EU directives, with the EU public procurement law. Uh, but I believe that uh, under certain conditions, um, LCR, so local content requirements, can be used without violating the fundamental principles of uh, EU public procurement law, which are protection of um, competition and equal uh, treatment uh, of uh, contractors, of economic operators. Um, and that's what I'm going to talk about uh, for the next few minutes. Uh, before I start, uh, let me just advertise briefly that uh, you can find my article that I mentioned in the link that uh, I will um, post uh, in the chat after uh, my short speech. Um, this link also allows you to download uh, texts by other authors who created this publication, including Professor um, Hyo Kino, um, who I was privileged to meet in uh, 2018 at the conference that I mentioned organized uh, in Cape Town by um, APLU, and whose views and academic activity inspired me and encouraged me to research local content issues in uh, South uh, Africa. And if you find my speech interesting, I invite you also to visit my YouTube channel um, as uh, well, uh, where I published mostly in Polish, um, but sometimes also um, in English. And okay, um, after this uh, product placement, uh, I can go to the main content, uh, which is uh, local content. So, uh, okay, so um, yeah, local content requirements from the perspective of the EU and Polish public uh, procurement law. And uh, maybe I should start with saying that um, I am mentioning, I am talking about the Polish public procurement law because of at least two reasons. Uh, First uh, one is uh, the most obvious, probably, because I am Paul, I am from Poland, so it is the closest perspective um, to me. Uh, but also because of the fact that I think that um, discussion about local content um, in Poland, in public procurement in Poland, is not really developed, is rather poor, but it doesn't change my conclusion that uh, it is probably the most developed discussion on this issue uh, in the whole European uh, European um, Union, uh, or maybe even not discussion, but rather uh, practice um, in this field. And I am going to say something about uh, about uh, that. Okay, so uh, let's uh, start uh, with um, the uh, agenda, a short description of uh, of the agenda. Um, so. Um, to, to, I, I should say that um, I will start with um, the issue of limitations of use, of use of local content requirements in EU public procurement law. Um, I will say something about uh, normative pillars of the EU public procurement law and relevant uh, Court of Justice, European Court of Justice judgments. Then I will um, I will mention uh, I, I will describe current trends that I noticed uh, in the use of uh, public uh, in the use of local content requirements in public procurement um, then uh, conditions for the admissibility of using uh, LCR in the uh, EU uh, and finally I will give you some uh, conclusions uh, I am quite experienced uh, speaker and lecturer so I know that um, it's good to know perspective of the end of any uh, any um, lecture. So uh, on each of uh, my presentation, uh, I also put uh, this, uh, yeah, I, I call that uh, mercy line or line of mercy. Uh, it means that uh, till the end we have uh, 15 slides, uh, but I hope that uh, I will be able to focus uh, your uh, attention um, on the next uh, slides. Uh, okay, uh, so when it comes to uh, when it comes to legal uh, legal framework, um, European legal framework uh, of uh, public procurement, I should uh, mention probably it's obvious to you, but I should mention that uh, in the whole European Union, um, public procurement problema is harmonized, what means that each uh, member state should have similar uh, regulation in this field. Uh, it also 
mean that uh, despite of fact that I am saying about uh, I will I will um, tell you about uh, Poland and Polish perspective, uh, my uh, conclusions, I think that my conclusions are relevant also to any other uh, European country, EU country, sorry, EU, EU, uh, EU country. So when it comes to legal acts that regulates this problem, I see, uh, I should mention these three directives uh, that so you can see on the slide, um, 23, 24 and 25. Uh, first one is about uh, concessions uh, and let me remind that uh, the object, the, what is the concession? Uh, the object of such a contract uh, is the procurement of uh, works or services uh, by means of uh, concession, um, the consideration of which uh, consists in the right uh, to exploit the works or services or in that right uh, together with the uh, payment. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, and another two another two uh, acts regulates uh, much more typical um, contracts, much more common type of uh, public procurement contracts, which are contracts uh, awarded uh, by so-called uh, classic authorities, and it is state and uh, its units and uh, utilities. Uh, I'm thinking about uh, contracting authorities uh, that um, are usually entrepreneurs uh, in a specific field, infrastructural uh, field like uh, yeah, energy that you mentioned, transport transportation and similar. Um, yeah, so these three directives, but uh, these three directives have um, the same common uh, pillar and uh, f the, the common fundamental uh, rule. Um, and I should uh, I should uh, say that um, I, I should read this, this rule. Um, the word of public uh, contracts, uh, the word of public contracts uh, by or on behalf of member states authorities has to comply with the principles of the treaty of the functioning European Union and in particular uh, the free movement of goods, freedom of establishment and the freedom to provide services as well as the principles deriving their form uh, such as equal treatment, non-discrimination, mutual recognition, proportionality and transparency. However, for public um, contracts above, a certain value provisions should be drawn up on coordinating national procedures, uh, program procedures, uh, so as to ensure that those principles are given practical effect and public procurement is opened up uh, to, uh, to competition. Uh, so, in the context of um, these rules, it is not surprising that possibility of implementation um, of postulates of uh, of postulates of uh, oh sorry because I have the signal from Zoom uh, oh okay okay it's uh, technical information okay um, so in the context of this uh, if this this rule um, this fundamental rule it is not surprising that possibility of implementation of uh, postulates of the local content concept is very limited. Uh, but uh, this moment, uh, yeah, I should explain uh, how I understand local content to explain why I think that um, it is not easy to uh, realize this postulate in accordance with the EU law. Um, I think that good base to do that is the definition uh, proposed formulated by OECD. Uh, and according to this definition, local content requirements are part of a border set of localization policies that favor uh, domestic industry over foreign competition, requiring companies and the government uh, to use uh, domestically produced goods or um, services as uh, inputs. Uh, I, uh, I am um, referring to the OECD definition because uh, in the whole European Union, we do not have any normative uh, legal definition of uh, local uh, content concept, local content requirements. And yeah, let me say that once again, it's obvious because of fact that um, common view on this problem I say is that um, it is not possible to uh, take into account uh, localization aspects and local content requirements um, generally. Um, Okay, and um, so I understand activities in the paradigm of uh, local content concept as attempt uh, to increase or build 
uh, or build um, the potential of um, domestic economy uh, using uh, public uh, procurement. Uh, I think it's not controversial and I hope that um, you uh, agree. Uh, so clearly such an approach involves a high risk of conflict with the principles of non-discrimination and fair competition. Uh, this is vital both in the EU perspective as well as with respect to uh, signatory states of the uh, multilateral, multilateral um, international agreement of government procurement of uh, 1914, uh, so-called GPA. Um, EU public procurement law um, rests on uh, the essential uh, premise uh, that any conditions established by uh, contracting authorities should not be chosen or applied uh, in a way that discriminates directly or indirectly against economic operators from other member states or from uh, third countries um, to the GPA or uh, to free trade uh, agreements um, to which the union is um, is party and you have uh, you have this uh, this this phrase uh, now uh, now uh, on the uh, on the slide uh, also it follows unequivocally from the gpa that parties uh, uh, to it uh, including its uh, procuring entities shall accord immediately and uh, unconditionally uh, to the uh, goods and services of any other parties and to the suppliers of any other party offering the uh, goods or services of any party treatment no less that uh, no less favorable um, than uh, the treatment uh, the party including its uh, procuring entities accords uh, to domestic goods services and suppliers uh, and uh, goods services and suppliers of any other party of course uh, it wasn't from uh, my memory it was uh, i i read uh, the phrase uh, from 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 the gp uh, gpa uh, oh sorry um yeah uh, given the previously cited principles of uh, of uh, eu procurement law um the potential for drawing inspiration from the south african solutions is severely limited in the uh, union um, after all uh, these solutions have been qualified by eu institutions as trade barriers uh, which uh, affect EU exports to non-EU uh, countries. And you can see that on the slide, there is a, a screen from uh, one of uh, the website of the EU institutions that confirm that um, European Union identify, recognize the South African regulation on uh, local content as a barrier and um, yeah and European Union is not happy um, because of um, because of uh, that fact uh, it is noted for instance that uh, one of um, the most uh, uh, important uh, obstacles for access uh, to uh, US procurement is a result of the buy America uh, act uh, which is uh, nowadays another or maybe the most obvious uh, the most obvious um, example and uh, um, most well-known example of um, local content or even protectionism uh, in, in public uh, procurement and this act uh, by um, this um, American act uh, by America build America act uh, is also mentioned at the same uh, website uh, that you can see uh, here and is also recognized as serious as serious um, serious uh, serious uh, barrier yeah but from our perspective, it is the most important that uh, EU institutions remain highly sceptical with respect also to the um, Public Procurement Regulation 2022, um, um, surmising that uh, South Africa's preferential procurement regulations uh, will now, since the shake-up in uh, 2022, uh, allow government entities more discretion in the implementing uh, procurement uh, policies. And the European Commission uh, did notice that the difference uh, in um, LCR related provisions uh, from 2017, South African regulations from 2017 and the uh, regulation from the 2022, but, but simultaneously expects um, the public procurement uh, bill to include LCR um, rules. And uh, I can also show you that uh, that, that, that conclusion um, yeah, on the slide. So you can see the preferential procurement regulation of 2022 
um, as was the case with uh, the 2017 version, provides for a preference point scoring uh, system, uh, though now does allow organs uh, of state more discretion when allocating these points. Uh, bids uh, for uh, public uh, tenders are still scored on a uh, 1910 uh, split on price. Um, and economic development for uh, contracts above um, round uh, 50 million and uh, 80 20 split uh, for contracts up to um, this uh, this amount. Um, the current legislation is currently under revision and a bill uh, has been published for consultations uh, to which the EU participated and submitted comments uh, in the current uh, draft. The Ministry of Finance has been left with the discretion to elaborate ad hoc localization rules uh, that would then fall outside the uh, scrutiny of the uh, Parliament. Of course, I don't want to assess this assessment uh, formulated uh, by um, by um, European Union institutions. Uh, I only want to uh, show you European perspective on this uh, problemacy and to show you uh, that, uh, yeah, um, I wanted to say we in Europe uh, have a problem with local content, but I do not have problem with local content. But European institutions um, still uh, still um, still have. Uh, so as a result, similar solutions uh, would be inadmissible under um, EU law. Solutions similar to um, to those uh, that were uh, established uh, or are establishing uh, now in um, South uh, Africa. As already observed, um, the EU directives governing public procurement permit public procurement to be used of um, to, 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 to be used to achieve uh, the objectives of socio-economic policy adopted by uh, the states or the contracting authorities. Um, even so, they clearly stipulate that the provisions of uh, the EU public procurement law cannot be applied uh, in a way that discriminates uh, directly or indirectly against economic operators from other member states especially, but also from third countries, from, um, from uh, countries that are parties to the uh, GPA or free, trade uh, free, free trade um, agreement uh, to which the union is a uh, party. So it is worth noting that um, the jurisprudential uh, a key of the court of justice of the eu includes um, a ruling uh, which uh, address uh, the application of the lcr uh, directly and let me show you yeah this um, just three uh, but the last one is the most uh, important three judgments of european court uh, of justice um, as you can see uh, these judgments are quite old because it was issued um, in the late 80s or in the uh, 90s uh, the most important from them uh, especially is um, the um, judgment of the court of the um, June 1993, uh, in case uh, C243-89, uh, uh, so-called Danish content um, case, because it was a case um, commission of the European uh, communities versus uh, Kingdom of uh, Denmark. And uh, yeah, there is a short uh, quotation, uh, yeah, quote from uh, from this uh, judgment. Uh, Danish Contracting Authority published in 1987 in the supplement to the official journal of the European Communities a restricted invitation to tender for the construction of a bridge over the Western Channel. Um, and the most important information is that the general conditions which uh, form part of um, the contract uh, documents in these procedures procedure provided as follows. The contractor is obliged to use uh, to the greatest possible extent Danish materials, consumer goods, labor and uh, and uh, equipment. Uh, so, um, yeah, and that, that's why it is um, it is so-called uh, Danish content case. And um, it was thus alleged uh, that um, the cited clause uh, violated uh, violated uh, community law and uh, the principle of equal treatment of contractors arising uh, thereunder. Um, the allegation of non-conformity with uh, that treaty was not disputed by the Danish government. Um, 
some formal aspects were uh, were um, procedural aspects were uh, important in this case. But yeah, I want to say that um, yet in uh, it contended uh, that the controversial clause had uh, been uh, had been um, deleted uh, before the contract was signed. Uh, and uh, argued, uh, Denmark government argued that uh, uh, proof of uh, the de deletion uh, was sufficient to make uh, good the breach of uh, obligations alleged by the commission. Um, still, the court found uh, that, and this is a quote, even though the clause is in question was deleted shortly before signature of um, the contract with uh, ESG and consequently before notification of uh, the recent uh, opinion of uh, general advocate, uh, the fact remains uh, that the tendering procedure was conducted on the basis of a clause which was not in conformity with community law and which by its nature was likely to affect uh, both the composition of the various consortia uh, and uh, the terms of uh, the tenders submitted by the five preselected uh, consortia. So the most important uh, information is um, that, uh, yeah, European Court of Justice, um, European Court of Justice um, decided that uh, such clause um, was not in accordance with the then com community law, now we should say uh, EU law. And this judgment is usually invoked to assert that it is not possible to apply the criteria of instrumentalization in public procurement uh, in a manner which is clearly contrary to the principle of protection of um, competition. However, one can ask whether the principles cited above and that I mentioned and the judgment in case um, Danish content clause utterly preclude um, the implementation of the local uh, content concept uh, regardless of uh, his uh, extent. Uh, the question is only seemingly uh, trivial. Um, the answer that uh, uh, making uh, postulations of the local content concept a reality is uh, to some uh, degree permissible under EU rules uh, is likewise uh, only seemingly uh, controversial. And uh, yeah, of course, that's my opinion. And I know that it may be uh, controversial, but I hope that I will be able to prove that uh, to you in the next uh, few minutes. Uh, so to support such a hypothesis, uh, one may recall that since the late um, 80s, um, it has been repeatedly confirmed in EU case law, particularly in the judgment cited in the um, introduction, that public procurement may be used to achieve strategic development policy uh, goals. Also, it has uh, been noted in um, the introduction um, that uh, the last three decades, we have seen growing awareness of the need of comprehensive approach to public um, management, uh, one which allows for the complexity uh, of the legal mechanism underlying the uh, conduct of development policy in a decentralized uh, public authority uh, structures. So I'm saying that the concept of strategic use of public procurement um, and um, the postulate to uh, realize so-called secondary goals through public procurement uh, nowadays is not a controversial postulate um, and uh, is uh, more and more often uh, implemented. Uh, so. Um, Working, uh, and it should be also uh, mentioned that uh, working within the paradigm of sustainable development uh, has gained increasing approval in that period, in the last 30 years. Um, in this approach, financial considerations are recognized as vital, uh, but they constitute only one of multiple factors which should be uh, taken into account in a decision-making process, particularly when awarding public procurement contracts. So what I want to say is that, okay, um, okay, uh, rule of equal treatment of uh, principle of equal treatment of all economic operators and um, the postulate or the demanding that we should choose uh, uh, the most uh, economically 
advantages uh, tender, it is still a pillar of European uh, public procurement law. But um, yeah, in this period of the last uh, three decades, we realized that um, we should say, let's strive uh, something more. We should uh, take something more through public uh, procurement. So the shift in um, this uh, direction is uh, evidenced, uh, for example, in the departure from uh, the new public management in favor of the good governance uh, concept advanced in public management uh, sciences. Meanwhile, legal scholars have noted growing number of regulations which oblige their public uh, addresses pay due attention to the social, ecological and innovation uh, innovative um, aspects. Uh, this has been particularly evident lately uh, in um, the initiatives of the EU, which sets even more ambitious goals in these domains. Uh, the Union has been particularly active in formulating and implementing the objectives of its environmental policies. And um, increasingly, often this um, uh, process involves strategies that not only affirm um, the necessity uh, for the public authority to undertake pro-environmental intervention in specific sectors of economy, but also indicate that public procurement should be uh, the means to achieve uh, achieve uh, achieve such a, such a goal. Uh, and um, yeah, um, yeah, to 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 achieve uh, such uh, such a goal. So uh, it would seem that uh, such an approach is well appreciated by individual member states, and the measure adopted in Poland um, offer a good example. First of all, I should uh, it should be emphasized. Um, that uh, according to the constitution of the Republic of Poland, and I mention about it because I know that uh, South African constitution is a really important base uh, in a discussion on the South African um, South African public procurement law and its social functions in its uh, functions in the context of the process of transition um, of the South uh, Republic of South Africa and our our history um, is, is quite uh, similar in many aspects. Uh, I remember that it was uh, really inspiring um, to me when I uh, had an opportunity to talk about that with uh, with Professor Giochino um, and we realized that um, yeah we have uh, um, we, we we have uh, much more similar, much closer uh, perspective uh, than, for example, um, paradoxically, than, uh, for example, uh, Poles and uh, and um, representatives of so-called uh, Western uh, Europe. Uh, our perspective, our I'm thinking about the perspective of you, South African lawyers, and me, the Polish uh, lawyers, uh, and and distance be between us is about uh, ten thousand kilometers. But I think that uh, that uh, yeah, we could be um, inspiring uh, for each other. Uh, yeah, so um, let's 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 go with the Constitution of the Republic of Poland. So uh, the primary enactment it is the primary enactment in the uh, Polish uh, framework of uh, sources of law. So the Republic of Poland must safeguard national heritage and must ensure the protection of natural environment pursuant to uh, the principles of sustainable development. Uh, it is assumed that the provision uh, constitutes an agenda, uh, meaning that it is addressed to the state and uh, sets uh, out the aims. It should be uh, guided by uh, when performing its uh, tasks. Uh, and what is particular in Poland, uh, both literature and the Polish case law uh, aptly um, observed that the principle of sustainable development should not be uh, circumscribed merely to uh, protecting cultural and natural heritage. And the constitutional tribunal, um, the Polish uh, constitutional tribunal, uh, most fully expressed this notion. And let me read uh, that. Uh, so 
the principle of sustainable development do not exclusively comprise uh, environmental protection and uh, or shaping of the spatial order, but also due solicitude uh, for social and civilizational development, which entails the necessity to create appropriate infrastructure, which is vital for the life of um, the individual and particular communities while taking their civilizational needs into account. Inherent in the concept of sustainable development is the need to take heed of the various constitutional values uh, values uh, and to balance them in an appropriate uh, manner and of um, this quote. So, uh, Polish courts in particular have noted that the principle of sustainable development plays primarily the role of directive guiding the interpretation of law. Uh, this means that it should permit all activities of uh, the state regardless of uh, the domain in which uh, such activity takes place. Um, Polish case law posits that uh, in the event of doubt of, as um, to the scope, uh, type and uh, the manner of uh, discharging uh, public duties, uh, one should fall uh, back on the principle of sustainable development. So finally, the most uh, recent legislative efforts in the field of public procurement demonstrate uh, a trend endorsing the concept of strategic use of public procurement. So the most prominent of um, those is um, the most important uh, regulation in the field of public procurement law in Poland, which is the act of 11 September 2019 on public procurement um, law. Maybe I should mention that it is also um, available in English uh, on the website of the Polish president of public procurement uh, office. Maybe it would be interesting uh, to you. Of course, I could also send you a link um, to that. So uh, this act came into force on the 1st January 2021, so it is also a uh, quite new regulation. Uh, and uh, the act clarifies how one of the ten uh, t tenets of uh, Polish uh, public uh, procurement uh, law, namely the principle of economic efficiency, should be um, construed. Uh, pursuant to Article 17 of our public procurement law, contracting authorities shall award uh, the contract in a manner ensuring the best quality of supply services and works justified by the nature of uh, the contract, of course within funds um, which uh, the contracting body may allocate to um, its uh, performance, and the best result of the contract including social, environmental, and economic uh, effects uh, insofar uh, as uh, any of these effects uh, can be obtained uh, in a given contract in relation to the expenditure uh, incurred. Uh, so the legislator also highlights that procurement may be legitimately used to uh, achieve strategic uh, objectives. For the first uh, time after Poland's accession uh, to the European Union, uh, which uh, had place in uh, 2004, its domestic uh, law um, now features uh, provisions which requires government administration to devise the state purchasing policy. Um, the state purchasing policy should define priority actions of the Republic of Poland in public procurement, as well as the uh, desired directions uh, that uh, the contracting authorities should uh, pursue when awarding contracts. So it shows that uh, the Polish authorities, Polish um, government power is interested in uh, using public procurement law as a tool to achieve its strategic goals, um, its uh, goals formulated in uh, the strategic acts, its, uh, its, its policy. So, uh, in particular, this means yeah, uh, purchasing innovative uh, or sustainable products and services uh, while paying due attention to standardization aspects, calculation of cost over the life uh, cycle of uh, products, corporate social responsibility, uh, dissemination of good practices and purchasing tools, as well as social and health related uh, aspects. Uh, defining prospective uh, actions of the government administration, um, this uh, policy, uh, state purchasing policy, also includes uh, the objectives and directions set out in the country's uh, medium term uh, development strategy. So, um, above warrants that, that I mentioned, uh, the following observations. Uh, I, I would like to formulate uh, some conclusions, uh, partial uh, conclusions. So, uh, 
In the light of um, EU law, there should be no doubt that the strategic use of public procurement is not confined exclusively to environmental issues, promoting innovation or social inclusive uh, policies. Um, the, uh, the, the requirements imposed on the contractors in a public procurement procedure may be informed by any objectives uh, the contracting authority, the goals of strategic development policy in particular, as long as uh, they are objectively justified while the use of public uh, procurement constitutes uh, an adequate and proportionate means uh, to that end. Simultaneously, the objectives uh, must not undermine of uh, fundamental principles of EU law because uh, it should be, um, I, I should stress, I should express that uh, despite of fact that um, this uh, strategic use of uh, law way of thinking about public procurement law is more and more popular, is becoming more and more popular, but still fundamental pillar of EU public procurement law and general EU law is the um, rule of fair trade and equal treatment of economic operators uh, yeah, to ensure um, freedoms of, uh, of, of, of services, for example, yeah, for entrepreneurs. So, uh, and uh, the, 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 another conclusion, elaborating uh, of the last uh, sentence of the pr 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 uh, proceeding, uh, it needs to be noted that um, the various activities in the public uh, sphere, especially those which consist uh, in creating law, uh, pursue distinct uh, values. Consequently, conflicts of values may arise um, and uh, the resolution of which uh, requires uh, appropriate uh, weighing. Um, so, um, clearly actions uh, aiming to undermine the fundamental uh, principle of EU law, uh, the mere guise um, of uh, realizing lower order values would have to be deemed uh, inadmissible. So, this leads to the crucial conclusion um, that uh, the motives uh, behind uh, the actions and their uh, rationale uh, are uh, fundamentally important. So, considering the above, uh, considering these conclusions that I mentioned, um, one can really argue that the introduction of regulation uh, analogous uh, to the Buy American Build America in any member state uh, would be out of question under current um, EU uh, law. It is clearly a protectionist enactment which directly supports domestic uh, industry and makes it more um, difficult uh, for foreign entrepreneurs um, to uh, access uh, US procurement market. Uh, the nature of the South African solution, from my perspective, of course, is somewhat different. Uh, obviously, um, to the extent uh, that they establish um, an example uh, that thresholds of mandatory share of domestic component um, in the subject uh, matter um, of uh, the contract, which are uh, prerequisite um, for any uh, entity competing for a public uh, contract, these solutions would have to be considered unacceptable under EU law. Uh, they would be even more um, objectionable uh, if uh, applied in abstract manner instead of invoking the specific need and the specific circumstances that prompted uh, the contracting uh, authority to award the uh, public contract. And yet the motivation of the South African lawmaker, which seeks to eliminate uh, social um, inequalities arising from historical circumstances and ensure the so-called transitional justice, could merit protection in the EU legal system. Also, the current uh, and uh, forthcoming legal solutions in South Africa um, may be expected to, to integrate LCRs uh, in future procurement uh, procedures, um, whereby um, they will not be applied in abstract uh, fashion based uh, on uh, an imposed legal mechanism, uh, but will likely require a, a nuanced approach um, which allows uh, for the particular uh, needs uh, that uh, the contracting authority uh, strives to satisfy. Therefore, an analysis of the development uh, trends in legislation involving LCRs may prove particularly inspiring from the uh, European perspective uh, as well. And I should also um, say it is, it is worth noting that um, I think that um, 
increasing uh, popularity of local content requirements uh, is a global trend in the contemporary uh, economy. And uh, because it is not only a perspective of the United States of America with its Buy American, Build America Act, um, it is also perspective of uh, many countries of sub-Saharan jurisdictions. And of course, uh, let me say, let me formulate this disclaimer that I am not an expert, but uh, I know something. Um, um, uh, I, I have some narrow knowledge uh, about that. And for example, I know that uh, the newest uh, public procurement law in um, Senegal um, has very interesting um, regulations on the local content problemacy. Um, a few uh, months ago, it was quite popular on LinkedIn that um, uh, Eswatini uh, published their uh, their act. And uh, as I as I remember, there is also uh, something interesting about uh, local content. Um, now I am uh, analyzing the regulations or. I am beginning my research. Uh, I'm beginning my research uh, on regulations in uh, Saudi Arabia. Um, in Saudi Arabia, there is even a specialized, uh, specialized. specialized governmental uh, body uh, specialized in um, local content, which is called LCGPA. It is Local Content Government Procurement uh, Authority. Uh, so the world whole world is thinking about local content and what about uh, what about um, european uh, european union as i mentioned i believe that under some conditions it is even uh, it is even um, acceptable to formulate local content requirements and in that context i should uh, i should say uh, i should mention uh, that uh, we can notice some activities that are focused on um, promoting local content perspective. And on this slide, uh, you can see a quote from, uh, from the opinion of the European Economic and Social Committee um, that uh, concern strategy uh, to harness the potential of the offshore renewable energy for a climate neutral uh, future. And there is this uh, this uh, this provision. The committee points out that any investment in offshore wind farms should contribute as much as possible to the socio-economic development of uh, the regions in the immediate uh, vicinity of the investment by promoting uh, participation in the project, the local content factor. So I know that it is not very strong base. It is not a legal provision. It is rather a postulate uh, voluntary uh, formulated by this um, this economic and social committee. Uh, but uh, I think uh, that it is symbolic and it is significant. It shows that even on the forum of European Union, we are um, beginning the process of understanding that it is the global trend and we should adapt uh, adapt um, to that. Um, as I mentioned, European directives uh, allows us to, uh, to take into account not only uh, economical, purely economical aspects of our purchasing process, but also uh, these so-called secondary goals, especially uh, social or environmental. And I think that it is the base that enable, enable us in uh, European Union uh, to formulate uh, to formulate um, local content requirements in our purchasing process organized in our public procurement uh, public procurement uh, system and uh, to prove that i would like to also say that in this period of last 3 uh, decades uh, we didn't european court of justice didn't issued only this one uh, judgment um, that I uh, called as um, Danish content clause uh, case. Uh, we have also another judgments that um, confirm that strategic use of public procurement is acceptable. And uh, these uh, three most important uh, judgments you can see on this uh, on this slide. Probably the most popular is this first one, Concordia Bus uh, Finland. 
Uh, and in this case, European Court of Justice uh, said that, okay, when you are formulating, uh, when you are creating your um, non-price criteria, um, contract award criteria uh, model, um, it is not necessary, You're, you, you are not forced to take price uh, as uh, the, or, or purely economical aspects as uh, the only admissible criteria, you can also take into account, for example, um, aspects of uh, protecting environment or public uh, health. Um, so when European Court of Justice also confirmed that, we should think about local content as a tool of strategic use of public procurement rather than an example of protectionism. So I know that uh, it is uh, smart, clever, and uh, and but a little bit fake that uh, our goal um, should be avoid accusations, uh, ac yeah, accusation uh, of uh, being protectionist uh, while formulating local content requirements. But we, in such situations, we should uh, we should uh, answer, uh, we in European Union, we should answer that my goal is not to uh, purchase uh, in a paradigm of protectionism. My goal is to, for example, uh, protect environment. Yeah, and uh, yeah, maybe in the uh, yeah, I, I know that uh, I am uh, speaking um, um, a long time, but uh, um, yeah, please uh, be sure that uh, I'm finishing. Yeah, I'm finishing. So uh, yeah, when it comes to uh, Concordia Bus uh, Finland, uh, it should be um, underlined that be, be before the admissibility of using public uh, uh, procurement to further development policy goals was so clearly asserted uh, by the EU uh, lawmaker, uh, the view gradually uh, won the lawmaker's approval through uh, case law, and this case law, uh, this case law, I um, I uh, indicate on this. Uh, on this um, on this slide, uh, and another important case law is yeah this uh, this uh, this case um, called as uh, Winstrom, and um, it was a case uh, between uh, the Republic of Austria and um, the company uh, Winstrom uh, GmbH. Uh, German, uh, yeah, German or Austrian um, uh, entrepreneur, and uh, yeah, the court found that subject to compliance with the principles of non-discrimination on or on and proportionality, uh, the contracting authorities uh, may, in the course of procurement proceeding, impose requirements which will also um, serve to accomplish uh, specific social or environmental um, goals. Uh, the latter two domains of uh, strategic um, state action have come uh, to the for within the concept of strategic use of public procurement, uh, conservation of the natural environment, and the policy of social um, inclusions. Uh, yeah, with regards to the uh, application of LCR, it may be noted that the uh, European Court of uh, Justice uh, case law includes ruling on the specific requirements that bidders had to meet as uh, part of the tender, namely geographical criteria. And this is this uh, last one, um, last one um, case law, uh, in case uh, Conste, it is a Spanish, uh, Spanish case. Um, yeah, uh, and um, I think that it is uh, it is uh, important to describe uh, the situation of this case. So, so please forgive me, um, and, and at least give me a few minutes, uh, a few minutes uh, more to describe this case because it shows um, what is acceptable and what is not acceptable in European Union when it comes to uh, when it comes to local um, content. So. Um, uh, in this uh, case, uh, concerning a tender procedure held in Spain for uh, provision uh, of respiratory uh, therapy services, which um, necessitated supplying uh, compressed uh, oxygen uh, gas cylinders, um, among other uh, things, uh, the court assessed, an example, uh, the permissibility of promoting by awarding additional points uh, through uh, non-price uh, contract award criteria, those contractors who at the time of submission 
uh, offer, submission tender, had at least two oxygen production facilities located less than 1,000 kilometers uh, from the capital of the province, uh, where a uh, province in Spain, uh, where the uh, contract was uh, to be performed. Uh, but the limitation was uh, substantiated on uh, the grounds of rel re reliability uh, and uh, security of supply. However, the court ruled, and this is a quote, uh, in any uh, even although uh, real re reliability of supplies may be included in the elements um, to be considered in order to ascertain uh, the most economically advantageous tender in the case of service uh, such as uh, that in uh, question uh, in the main proceedings uh, which aim to protect the life and health of persons by providing um, a suitable and um, diversified production uh, close to the place of uh, consumption. Uh, Thus, um, oh, and uh, it must be held that uh, those elements do not appear in this uh, case to be adapted to the objective pursuit in several uh, respects. Uh, so, thus, uh, the court did not reject the general possibility of giving performance to solution characterized by a certain degree of localness, uh, but merely indicated that uh, they must be proportionate while the contracting authority should be able to demonstrate that this is uh, the case. Uh, at this point, why should one should um, make an observation um, whose uh, practical significance is quite substantial? Uh, it appears that uh, the requirements uh, whose fulfillment would um, decide the uh, very eligibility to participate uh, in the procurement such as the Danish content uh, clause or the solutions provided um, for in uh, by American Build America Act can hardly be considered proportionate in objective terms. Naturally, uh, this is not impossible, yet unlikely. Uh, conversely, it would be relatively easier to demonstrate the proportionality of hypothetical requirements that uh, do not prevent participation in the procedure, but merely allow um, the contracting authority uh, to reward the solutions with uh, a high local content uh, parameter. An example as part as standard evaluation criteria. So the first practical conclusion is that we in European Union, when we are talking about uh, local content requirements, we are thinking uh, to be in accordance with European law. We are thinking rather about criteria, uh, contract award criteria, rather than uh, about, for example, condition that uh, has to be met um, uh, to be uh, allowed to submit um, the tender. So, to, to recapitulate, um, it would follow um, that uh, the inclusion of uh, LCRs, local content requirements, in public procurement procedures uh, is also permitted in the EU, um, albeit to a limited extent. Uh, in the tender procedures uh, taking place in the EU member states, uh, such solutions uh, must respect the principle of proportionality in line with the EU public procurement law, uh, stem from uh, objectively justified needs of the contracting authority and in all certainty uh, cannot pursue uh, protectionist uh, interest by limiting uh, access to the procedure for contractors who do not meet certainly um, LCRs, uh, which not only means contractors from another member state, uh, but also contractors from other uh, another region or entities uh, distinguished by any other criterion of uh, geographical division. Uh, so I believe that uh, LCRs are admissible in the contracting authority if, if the contracting uh, authority can demonstrate that their application improves uh, the chances of satisfying a particular uh, purchasing need by selecting the most economically advantageous standard. Such a conclusion draws on um, a view which is not disputed in the literature, uh, namely that the notion of the most economically advantageous standard should not be reduced to the financial uh, aspects alone. Uh, instead, it should comprise the um, entirety of uh, the legal economic circumstances, uh, legal and economic circumstances, uh, under which the contracting authority intends to satisfy a specific need through the award of public uh, contract with the paradigm of uh, sustainable development 
as uh, uh, pri pri priority. Uh, so local content uh, is uh, acceptable, w acceptable when it is a tool of uh, strategic use of public procurement rather than an uh, example of protectionism, because in that case, it wouldn't be uh, accepted uh, in, uh, in European Union. Uh, so I think that um, it is uh, very important from both Polish and South Africa uh, perspective, um, take into account our history in the last um, decades, uh, our transition uh, process, and uh, I believe that we are able to prove that uh, our objectively justifiable needs or objectively justifiable needs of our uh, um, contracting authorities uh, may refer to our socio-economic needs. Uh, and in that case, if, if, if our goal is not to uh, be a protectionist, but to realize our goals of strategic um, development policy, uh, I believe that in that perspective, that that way of thinking about local content requirements is acceptable, uh, especially taking into account this last three uh, judgments. So uh, Concordia Bas Finland, Winstrom and Konce uh, taking into, into account this uh, this um, this judgment. So uh, there are the conclusions of my paper that, uh, as I mentioned, was a trigger to be uh, to be your uh, your guest, um, which I really appreciate and 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 I am very grateful. Um, I formulated this conclusion, so it is not uh, not necessary to uh, be um, yeah to be. Um, more uh, intensive in speaking uh, and 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 I, I I can avoid reading uh, that so thank you for attention um, for for that moment um, if you are interested uh, in uh, my paper or my activity on YouTube channel um, please do not hesitate contact me via this email or just visit me my my, my channels on uh, YouTube or or uh, LinkedIn so once again thank you uh, thank you very much Thank, thank you, Dr. Kola. Thank you for that. Um, the talk quite quite interesting. I'm just um, yeah, I'm keen to understand. Anybody have got some questions? Anything further for for Dr. Kola that you wanted to elaborate on? I've got a few questions, but I'll hold back and just see if anybody else got some some questions. Uh, of course, I know that. Uh, yeah, of course, I know that uh, from my perspective, it is the uh, most demanding uh, part of our meeting. Uh, so uh, I know that um, I didn't give you mercy and I was talking uh, about one hour, uh, but uh, it doesn't change that uh, I would like to ask you for, for, for a mercy with your, uh, with, your, uh, with your questions. Yeah, but of course, it is, it is a joke and uh, yeah, please do not hesitate uh, uh, to, 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 to ask me for, for something. Okay. So you can just put up your hand if you have a question uh, on mute. Uh, Malika, thank you. You can unmute Malika. Thanks, Andre, and uh, good morning to everyone. Um, Dr. Kola, uh, thanks for the insightful presentation. Um, just uh, your view. Uh, you mentioned that uh, in the non-pricing procurement, you exclude um, criteria that involves uh, socio-economic issues. You know, I'm just wondering if really we're talking about uh, sustainable procurement and we're living some of the pertinent issues uh, regarding the uh, socioeconomic, such as uh, child labor, uh, will that not uh, derail the 
sustainability when coming to procurement, you know, because we, and when you do your sub inspection to your suppliers, because you really don't want to deal with the non-compliant suppliers, especially with regard to issues such as the child, child labor. Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, okay, uh, okay. Uh, I hope that uh, I hope that I will be able to uh, to answer your, your your question, and I hope that I understood your uh, your your question. Uh, let me give, please give me a moment. I I have to deal with something with my computer. Uh, um, Okay. Okay. Um, of course, uh, of course, um, we can use non-price uh, criteria, and uh, and of course we can take into account uh, in this criteria, uh, for example, uh, such as socio-economic aspects that you have mentioned, which is, for example. Um, preventing uh, our uh, market uh, from um, the obviously negative phenomenon of uh, child labor. Um, in European Union, I think it is really rare because uh, we do not, uh, we, I think that we in Europe and our entrepreneurs, we do not have the problem with this phenomenon. Uh, but of course, uh, it is obvious that um, we have a problem uh, in these industries uh, where we have entrepreneurs that uh, outsourced uh, some services uh, out of the European Union uh, to the countries where this uh, problem really exists. And um, I have to admit uh, that uh, these days uh, I am um, supporting one of my client, uh, I'm supporting one of my client uh, in formulating uh, contract award criteria that refers uh, to, to this problemacy. Uh, I should also mention that um, it is not um, very popular or this aspect is not very uh, popular uh, in, um, in European public procurement law also because of uh, one another uh, reason. Um, it is not necessary to formulate, it is usually, it is usually not necessary um to formulate uh, non price contract award criteria referring to the uh, to the um to the to, to the problemacy of um, child uh, labor because of fact um it is a um, criminal offense in um european union and especially in my country in poland and uh, if there is anybody uh, anybody uh, entrepreneur who uh, was accused and who was um, sentenced in jail or it was uh, con confirmed by court that he is uh, guilty of um, taking advantage of uh, um, child labor, um, such an entrepreneur would be uh, excluded uh, from uh, the uh, public procurement proceeding what means in fact that uh, such uh, such uh, uh, such an entrepreneur uh, is generally excluded from the whole public procurement uh, eu uh, market of course it means that uh, to exclude such a, such an uh, such a uh, entrepreneur it is necessary uh, to um, to prove that there is uh, that the judgment uh, that confirmed such a guilty was issued. Um, so yeah, I'm not sure if I answered your your question, uh, but yeah, that, that that's what I wanted to say in 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 that context. So we can take that into account, and sometimes it happens, but extremely rarely. Uh, I know uh, two cases uh, that could be um, example of that. One was organized by contracting authority from Norway, uh, but Norway is not a member state of European Union. Uh, and uh, and I can also mention example from my uh, practice as a uh, as a practitioner as a lawyer uh, practicing. 
Uh, now I am um, supporting one of my clients and we are preparing, it is not, uh, it is not uh, issued yet, but we are preparing um, some criteria uh, that um, will refer to this uh, problemacy. But generally, uh, it is usually not needed because entrepreneurs who uh, are not in accordance with the prohibition of taking advantage uh, of uh, lab child labor are excluded um, excluded uh, from the public procurement proceedings uh, in Poland and generally in the whole European Union. Thanks, Mr. Kona. Thanks. Um, um... Henry, can you hear me? Yeah, I, I, I can, I can, I can hear you, and probably Henry also. Oh, okay. No, thanks, thanks, uh, thank you very much, sir. Okay, thank you, thank you very much. So you said we can access uh, your your details uh, from uh, your website, right? Yes, yes, of course. Maybe, maybe the now. Paper. Uh, yeah, maybe now it's uh, it's a good moment to uh, that I could uh, send you the link um, to, to to that because we have uh, a moment of silence. Uh, so let me let me do that. Uh, Fortunately, the, I think the chat is deactivated and I don't have the access to to uh, to activate it. Okay. Um, yeah, okay, so, so, so no, no, no problem. So, um, of course, uh, uh, I don't want to be so insistive. Uh, so, uh, I will send uh, these links uh, to uh, Mr. Uh, Sean Scott, and if you uh, if you were interested, uh, probably he would um, be able to share uh, these links with you. Mm -hmm. I'll forward. We will forward it. Yeah. Any any other questions? Okay. Um, seeing there's no further questions, I've got uh, a few, but but may, maybe just uh, one or two. Let me just focus on on one or two. The one is in terms of the local content. Uh, um, just from your experience, just from your research and, and that you've done, um, what would you say? What are some of the? I mean, so so we've obviously when we implemented local content, you know, there are certain successes and certain things that didn't go so well. Um, uh, what would you say, what would be some of those kind of criteria or what are the commodities that would be, if you like, suitable, would be more suited for local content versus those that would be less suited for, for kind of local content requirements? So what would be some of that criteria a person would look at to, to decide this particular commodity would be local content and this not? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um... I'm afraid that uh, my answer wouldn't be uh, satisfying uh, from the perspective of South African practitioners um, because of the fact that, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning of our meeting, um, we in European Union and we in uh, we lawyers in the countries uh, that are member states of EU, um, we have very poor experience in, um, in um, using um, demanding criteria uh, that can be assessed as a uh, promoting local content um, especially we even do not know how um, we, we do not have any tools to measure uh, the local content we don't know what does it mean local content and i could give you an example which is not uh, which is not a good uh, example but uh, uh, in my country, in Poland, um, a few months ago, they were uh, issued some documents, official government documents, but they are not so source of law. It is something like a policy, uh, something like that, that uh, describe uh, local content as a situation when we um, award the contract, uh, to when we give a contract um, to the entrepreneur, uh, who is located in Poland, but um, it is not 
economically effective because it in European Union it is uh, extremely easy to have a location in any um, country so I can be um, a company uh, from um, let's say I don't know from France for example I can be an uh, uh, entrepreneur from France uh, who uh, has its uh, manufacturers uh, in France uh, and um, the remuneration from the contract is spent in France uh, but formally um, it's uh, it's location location of this uh, of this uh, f formal location of this uh, of this uh, company maybe in Poland uh, and in that case of course um, formally it is local content and we could say yeah we awarded a contract we gave a contract to the company that is located in Poland but such a so, such a situation such a solution wouldn't have uh, wouldn't have um, any impact or very small impact on the Polish economy and we won't be able in such a case to support our uh, socio-economic um, goals that should be focused on supporting our domestic market, our domestic um, economy. Of course, once again, not from the protectionist uh, perspective but from the perspective of our development policy uh, strategic development policy uh, goals so what i could say um what i am almost sure is that um your experience um your uh, past decision how to measure uh, your, uh, I, I, I'm, th I'm saying about, um, of course, uh, South African lawmaker, but I'm also saying about um, countries uh, out of European Union, especially the, this uh, Saudi Arabia, which uh, has a very impressive uh, uh, and inspiring documents on local content and with uh, practical guides um, how to how to measure local content. Um, from, uh, from 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 our perspective uh, now is um, um, so th fr from my perspective from the European perspective I could formulate only this one conclusion um, now we are focused on um, proving that use of non-price criteria and, and it is um, generally the only one purely acceptable tool of local content uh, and uh, the only way acceptable the uh, way of um, formulating uh, so-called local content requirements uh, so now we are uh, we are fighting to prove that uh, it is in accordance with this european court of justice um, judgments uh, it's, it's 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 case law uh, and um, we um, as i should uh, indicate uh, particular uh, example of uh, of uh, the uh, of the uh, criteria that is non price criteria and it is um, in accordance with postulates of local content concept i think that for example um, criteria that are um, tied with the postulate of um, reducing uh, coal footprint uh, may be acceptable uh, what i'm thinking about um, let's imagine a situation that we have a um, contract uh, award uh, procedure uh, purchasing procedure and uh, it is uh, the the subject of this procedure is a supply supply of some goods um, and it's obvious that usually in such cases um, very important element of uh, in, in a supply chain is uh, transport transportation um, so uh, I could prefer these solutions that enable me to reduce uh, coal footprint in that way that uh, I think it's also obvious that the closer is um, entrepreneur to the place where these goods should be delivered the shorter distance that uh, has to be passed um, in this element of transportation um, so the lower uh, reduction uh, the, 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 the lower um, emission of uh, pollutions uh, and in that way um, I 
can uh, combine a few goals. Uh, I can say that I will give additional points basing on the model of uh, non-price criteria. Uh, I will give uh, more points to these entrepreneurs whose manufacturers or whose logistic centers are closer to the, for example, uh, place of uh, contracting authority location. Um, and uh, in that way, I, in fact, uh, support local entrepreneurs because local entrepreneurs, fr fr from my perspective, uh, entrepreneurs who are located um, the closest uh, to Poland are entrepreneurs who are in Poland. Um, and, uh, and, uh, and in that way, I do not have to say that it is local content. Uh, I can say that uh, my goal is not protectionism. My goal is to protect environment. And um, yeah, I'm, I, I know that uh, it may seem strange, uh, but uh, I believe that it is the only way um, from the perspective of the EU law uh to prove that it is uh, acceptable and that it is in accordance with the eu uh, law so uh i think that um i think that uh, i should say that um we should be how to say that um, in english um, cunning maybe it would be uh maybe it would be um good word um but uh, yeah it is it is that what i what i wanted uh, to say that uh, we uh, our discussion on public procurement law and uh, and uh, local content uh, is rather poor and uh, we are on the much earlier stage of discussion on local content we do not have um, almost any obvious and uh, common tools of ensuring local content but I think that, uh, and I see that as a practitioner, that now we are trying to uh, look for um, justifications to do something that is not focused on the local content, but in fact, it realizes local content. And it is, it may be based on the postulate of protecting environment, but also in other in other um, aspect that is sometimes taken into account, it is the uh, security of supply uh, su uh, su supply chains, supply chains, uh, and uh, it, uh, it it has become um, obviously after the COVID pandemic, uh, when we realized uh, when we in Europe realized that um, we do uh, have almost nothing uh, to prevent ourselves. Uh, um, against uh, the COVID uh, risks, and we uh, we had to uh, buy um, anything from China, and um, after that we uh, started. Um, we, we we became um, aware that uh, it is not a problem only on the healthcare sector. Uh, now um, European institutions uh, formulate very. Uh, offensive um, offensive uh, policy when it comes to so-called ICT market um, and and uh, yeah and we we in saying we I'm thinking about uh, European institutions and European Union uh, so European Union formulate post stated we should um, be um, self-efficient uh, when it comes to supply chains in um, a few uh, a few um, areas, a few branches of, of uh, economy. And to do that, of course, we have to support uh, local content. So uh, that's why I said that it, it is not, uh, probably it is not, I, I suppose that it is not satisfying from your perspective because uh, it is not, um, how to say that it is not, um, very precise and uh, and and it is not um, it is not uh, specific on or, or or concrete maybe I should use the, that word it is not a concrete uh, but it's um, the all word I think that uh, from the European perspective we could say. Thank you, thank you, Nicola. So I mean, it was interesting to to hear that the ICT market is something you're looking at uh, at looking at uh, localizing some of the aspects of that. 
Yeah, yeah quite especially interesting perspective. Yeah, it, it is it is interesting, but it is also very demanding because it is easy to say that uh, we should support localization uh, in the ICT market, but uh, as we know, uh, it is not easy it's because you have to. Global. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah, of course, it is. It is very global, and of course, I, I will send you a link to this um, uh, statement of the EU institution concerning um, ICT market uh, as well with uh, another links that I mentioned. That would be great. Thank you. Thanks.